and welcome back to Storytime with Mrs. Howergy. I'm Mrs. Howergy. Today we will be beginning the series Amelia. This one is Amelia's Notebook. My mom just gave me this notebook. She said it would make me feel better to write down my thoughts. Why would a dumb notebook make me feel better? Nothing can make me feel better except going back home to my old house, not this new house, in a new city in a new state. Moving was weird. A big truck came, our, came to our house and everything, everything went inside it. All of our furniture and clothes and dishes and vacuum. Is that spelled right? Cleaner. Even my collection of rubber bands, all colors. Then the house was empty and sad. I said goodbye to my bedroom. Actually, it's Cleo's bedrooms too. I mean, it was Cleo's bedroom too. I hate it here. These things all have the same shape. Hairdo, toothpaste, suitcase, packed up. Worm. Cleo is excited about moving because in the new house she doesn't have to share a bedroom with me anymore. We each got our, our own, which is just fine with me. I'm sick of her stuck-up snootiness. Cleo with her big lips and jelly roll nose, that's why I call her jelly roll nose. She hates it. She thinks she's Miss Perfect just because she happened to be born first. But I know secrets about her that show she's not so perfect, like she snores and she picks her nose with her little finger. Cleo didn't cry when we left, but I did. Then we piled in the car and it took three days to drive to the new house. At every single restaurant we stopped at for lunch or dinner, Cleo ordered the exact same thing, hamburger and french fries every time, boring. I told her she was going to turn into a big fat hamburger. She was already beginning to smell like one. She just laughed at me and stuck french fries up her nose till mom said to quit it. I saved matches from each restaurant. Now I have a collection. And I saved little soaps from the hotels. I would have three cute little soaps, but Cleo took one. The best part about moving, the only good part about moving, was eating in a restaurant, eating in restaurants and staying in hotels. At hotels, I don't have to make my bed, I can leave towels on the floor, I can jump up and down on the bed, and best of all, I can watch cable TV. Hip hip hooray. This was a hard drawing. It took me long a long time. I think it turned out pretty good. The worst part was every day I got further and further away from home. I already missed miss my house, my school, and especially my best friend Nat, Nad Nadia. My best friend Nadia, she has braces on her teeth, so usually she smiles with her mouth closed. I draw her with her mouth open because I like her shiny braces. They look like tiny railroad trucks or a zipper. Nadia promised to write lots of letters and she gave me a great going away present. It's a set of markers, 24 colors. I'm using them in this notebook and when I write to her, I've already written her six postcards, postcards. I gave Nadia a necklace for a going away present. I made it myself with beads and fishing wire. I made one for me too, just like it, so we could have so we could be twins. I wear my necklace and feel like Nadia is closer to me, but I still miss her a lot. We finally made it to our new house, and after we had lunch at Burger Bob's, the moving truck came with all our stuff. It's an okay house, I guess. Cleo was busy decorating her new room putting up posters and making a big deal about arranging her furniture. I just told mom to put my stuff anywhere. I don't care. I just want to lie in my bed and look out the window. I wish I could turn into a bird and fly back home. I 
wrote Nadia about my new school. It's just two blocks from our house. We have Mrs. Kravitz, Miss Janko, Mr. Noodle. The other kids are all right, but there's nobody like Nadia here. Leah, Max, Amy, and Franny. I brought, I brought my notebook with me to school so I can write down things to remember to tell Nadia. Right now it's lunchtime. Today's hot lunch is beef stew, tater gems, canned peach slices, and a brownie. Yuck. Franklin just smushed his tater gems, roast me out. They were disgusting before, but now they look like squashed bugs. Mario flung the cling, the cling peaches at Philip. One flung cling peach clung to his head. Mia used the brownie as a door stop to keep the cafeteria door open. A few more brownies and they could build the new gym. And the teachers are always talking, that the teachers are always talking about. Lucky for me, I'm too busy writing to eat. I did drink the milk, but the beef stew was too disgusting even to smell. Jenna says they use dog food. I believe it. The only kid who ate everything was Melissa. She says food here is a lot better than what she gets at home. She even helps the hairnet ladies so, they, so she can have seconds. Every Sunday, Mom lets me call Nadia, and we can talk for 10 minutes. Nadia says she misses me, too. I told her about my notebook, how I write down things to tell her and draw picture, pictures. She says I should write stories in my notebook, not just things I notice. I don't know. Nadia makes up great stories. I just like to draw pictures. I got a letter from Nadia today. It says, Dear Amelia, I'm writing a book for the Young Authors Fair. Remember the one we had last year? You did the story about the swinging peacock, and I did the story about the dancing donut. Oh, singing peacock, and I did the story about the dancing donut. This time I'm writing about you moving away, and me being sad, and missing you. But then we learn we can still be friends, even far away. And, and, to visit, and I visit you, and you visit me, and we stay friends forever. Good story, huh? Also, I'm learning to ice skate. I fall down a lot. Love, Nadia. This school has an, uh, an author's fair, too, but I'm not sure I can write a story for it. I can't write about moving away now because Nadia is doing, doing that, and I don't want to be a copycat. I wish I could learn to ice skate, too, but Mom says no. It's too expensive. Maybe I'll write a story about an ice skater instead. Once there was a girl who wanted to be an ice queen. She practiced skating every day after a long time and lots of practice. She was very good. She could jump and twirl and kick high all while skating for her birthday. She had a skating party. Kids skated for pin the tail on the donkey. They skated for musical chairs. They ate cake and ice cream. The girl wore a birthday crown. At last her dream had come true. She was the ice queen. It's an okay story, but not good enough for the author's fair. I have to keep trying. Cleo has a new best friend already. They close the door to her room and gab and gab and blab and blab for hours. When they go into the kitchen for a snack, they don't even say hi to me. They act like I'm another chair, not a person. Leo's friend's name is Gigi, and of course she's very pretty, with pierced ears, which mom says Cleo and I can't have yet, and definitely no nose piercing ever. Gigi thinks Cleo is so great, when really she isn't at all. Like, watch Cleo eat something, you'll see what I mean. Gigi eats one tiny nibble at a time. She bites, chews, swallows, and then bites again. It's a very polite way to eat. But Cleo gobbles. She bites, chews, bites, chews. Finally, she has a huge wad on her cheek, which she chews and chews and chews like a cow. And when she swallows at last, you can see a big bulge go down her throat. So this is where I'm going to stop this book for today. Please join in tomorrow to finish the story. Um, I hope you like this video and please subscribe below. Bye bye.